everyone welcome back to my channel in this video we will create a qr code scanner app using ml kit you know what a qr code scanner app is right but what you need to know is how qr code works first let me show you the demo as soon as you open the app the camera opens scan the qr code or a barcode and it automatically displays the qr code's content here if the content is text, then it simply displays it. But if the content is a URL link, then you can click on it and the link will be opened in a web view. Isn't that cool? Now, how a QR code works? Do you see these little black and white squares? They are binary. I am sure you know that a binary is 0 and 1. So the black square is 1 and the white square is 0. So a QR code stores data as a pattern of black and white squares. Each square in the QR code represents bit of information like letters, numbers or symbols. When a scanner reads the QR code, it translates this pattern into a readable information such as text, a website link or a contact. The scanner uses the alignment and timing patterns within the QR code to ensure it reads the data accurately. See. These three boxes are fixed. They help the scanner understand the orientation of the QR code. The remaining area contains the data. Also, in large QR code, small additional square appear in specific area to help with alignment. Got it? Now, let's create it. Open Android Studio. Create a new project. Name it the QR Code Scanner app. and click on finish. As I said at the start, we will be using MLKit. So go to MLKit website. We are creating this barcode scanner project. So click on get started. Now, how does ML play a role in QR code scanner? ML algorithms help identify barcode patterns from a live camera feed or image. Once the barcode pattern is recognized, ML models are used to interpret as data. This is done by mapping the black and white squares to specify the binary sequence that are 1 and 0. And according to that, our data is displayed. Now let's create it. So copy the dependency and paste it here in the Gradle. We are also using the camera for scanning the barcode. Hence, adding Camera X dependencies. Camera X makes the process of adding a camera to your project very easy. Then click on Sync Now. And done. Next, let's add permission for the camera. So go to Android Manifest. Add Camera Permission. Also, add its hardware permission. Then our app will consist of two screens. One is where the camera will be for scanning and two will be our web view, where the websites will be displayed. So let's create the second activity. I'll name it web view activity. And done. Now let's design the UI. So first, go to Activity Main. Here, the UI is very simple. We will have a preview view, which is our camera view, and a text view where the QR code content will be displayed. Easy. But what exactly preview view is? See, in the preview view, camera will automatically detect the QR code without capturing an image or storing an image. And also, it makes the entire process very seamless. Like if you have seen my previous video of the MLKit project series, there we have created an image labeling app and a text recognition app. But ML part was easy, but the camera part was so hectic. Like permissions, launching the camera, clicking a picture, then storing the image and then retrieving the image and displaying it. Too much of work, right? Now, you will see how Camera X reduced the amount of work that goes behind it. Then below it, a text view whose ID is Result Text View with width as 0 dp and height as 100 dp and other attributes. Now, 
Next, let's design an activity web view. Here also the UI is very simple. All you have to do is add a web view. And then, now let's write the logic in main activity. So declare and initialize the UI elements which we created in activity main XML. Those are preview view and text view. Now, step number one is to request camera permission in logic. So write, well, request permission launcher is equal to register for activity result, activity result contract dot request permission. Then inside it, create a variable is granted whose data type is boolean. So if is granted is true, means camera permission is given, then we are supposed to start our camera. So I will create a separate function for it as start camera. Else, in result text view display, camera permission is required. Then, Request permission launcher dot launch means to request the camera permission through manifest. Like do you see those dialog boxes that ask for permissions? That's what this is. Now let's write the code for start camera function. This function set up the camera for a QR code scanner app using camera X. So write along with me. Well, camera provider future. It retrieves an instance of process camera provider which controls the life cycle and connections of the camera. Then we need to set the screen resolution for which we use size and resolution selector. So write, well, screen size. Here the target resolution for the camera preview is set to 1280 into 720 pixels. Ensuring the camera matches this resolution if possible. Here, the fallback rule is set to none, which means no alternative resolution is used if the size is not available. Next, we need to set preview. So for that, add listener on camera provider future and inside it, we will create preview object. The preview object is created and configured with the resolution selector. The set surface provider method then attaches this preview to the preview UI component, allowing live camera feedback on the screen means automatic detection of the QR code. Then, once the QR code is detected, then next we need to analyze it. So for that, we will use image analysis. This setups an image analysis instance for frame by frame analysis for a QR code scanning. The strategy keep only latest. 
back pressure strategy discards all frames to avoid lag. Then we need to set the analyzer. So for that, we need to create a camera executor variable. So executor service is provided by MLKit and also initialize it. Then here set analyzer method assigns an analyzer to process frames. For that, we will create a separate function where the ML will process the image, means display the QR code result. So for now, I will leave it blank. Then we need to adjust a few settings of camera, like default camera will be the back camera. Then next bind it to the app's life cycle, this. It links the preview and image analyzer components. So the camera provides live feedback to the preview view and processes frame for analyzer simultaneously. Now let's write the code for image processing. So create a function process image proxy with image proxy parameter. Then inside it, proxy image, means the QR code that it detected will be stored in the media image variable. Then if the media image is not null, it's converted into an input image object required by MLKid's barcode scanner. The rotation degree parameter ensures that the image is correctly rotated for accurate scanning. Next is very important. Here we need the barcode scanner to process the image. So create a variable barcode scanner. Also initialize it. And then over here, barcode scanner dot process the image stands the input image to MLKit's barcode scanner where it detects and decodes any barcodes or QR codes. If the barcode is successfully detected, the add-on success listener retrieve it in the barcodes list. Here we will handle the barcode for which we will create a separate function later. This method will open our link in the web view. Then if there is an error during scanning, then add on failure listener sets a failure message in result text view as fail to scan QR code. Regardless of success or failure, add on complete listener ensures the image proxy is closed, freeing up memory and allowing the next frame to be processed. Then we can call this process image proxy here inside the image analysis with an image proxy argument. Now, capturing, analyzing, processing and displaying the content of the QR code, everything is done. Next, what we need to do is what to do with the content. Like if it is a URL or a link, then we are supposed to open it in a web view. So let's write the code for it. Create a function handle barcode with barcode as a parameter then write along with me. Now, this line attempts to retrieve the URL if the barcode contains one. If no URL is available, it uses the barcode's display value instead. This ensures that any content in the barcode is captured even if it is not a URL. Then, if the URL is not null, it set the content as the text of the result text view. Then set on click listener makes the text clickable. Clicking it will open an activity which is a web view activity.
Also, we will pass our URL to the web view activity. And in the web view activity, we will receive it. Otherwise, if no content is detected in the QR code, then it will display no QR code detected. Now, you can call this matter here inside the process image proxy. with the barcode as a parameter. Then finally create an on destroy function that will close the camera executor if it is in no use. And that's it. Lastly, let's write the logic for web view activity. Here declare and initialize the web view which we created in web view XML. Then remember we pass a URL from main activity. That what we need to receive here. So write well URL intent get string extra and the key should be the same. So it's URL in small. Then initialize web view client. And JavaScript enabled as true. Enabling JavaScript allows a more interactive experience on the website. Next, if the URL is not null, means the QR code contains a URL, then load the URL in a web view. And that's it. Our QR code scanner app is ready. Let's run the app. See, first it asks for camera permission, so allow it. Then automatically the camera is open and now look carefully. The camera will automatically detect the QR code and display the result. Like this QR code consists of text, so even if you click on it, nothing will happen. Let's try a different QR code. So this one has a link and when I click on it, look, the website is open using WebView. Isn't that amazing? So yeah, that's it for the video. If you are new to this channel, then please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.